The, uh, to start our afternoon program, the uh, pers person we we're going to be hearing from is Pastor Brian Wingenroth. Um, Brian was the pastor here from 1981 until 1983, and he put together a short video presentation to greet us. Okay, so Brian, Pastor Brian Wingenroth. Well, greetings to our dear friends and brothers and sisters in Christ in New Glarus. We are so thankful for the invitation that we received from Pastor uh, Boomer to be part of this 50th anniversary celebration. We are truly grateful to the Lord for the way that he has used and preserved the New Glarus Bible Church over these 50 years, and we appreciate very much the opportunity to participate with you. Uh, to begin with, I'd like Debbie to perhaps give you a little bit of uh, her testimonies and expressions of remembrances, and we'll let her start. Hi there. I wanted to share some of my favorite memories of our time with all of you in New Glarus. Um, one of the most memorable, believe it or not, is the 4th of July softball games. And for those of you that were playing at the time, you might remember that Brian and I had to both be on the same team because if we weren't on the same team, uh, Brian would, would fight with me. And so we had to... No, she was a sort of loser. And no. that would... Okay, okay well, we, we Mo shouldn't do that. Moving, moving on. <laughs> um, um, as far as the church goes, I remember leading the choir, sometimes playing the piano or organ, and I really enjoyed being involved in that way. Um, we've lived in other parts of the country, now, so I miss hearing the, the Swiss jokes and the Norwegian jokes. <laughs> Can't um, find jokes like that any other place in the country. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> um, I remember Brian and I singing duets. Uh, that didn't last long after we left New Claris because um, they, we found a bigger pool of talent <laughs> and that, and so um, we were able to draw back from that. One of my other favorite memories of our time in New Claris is I remember doing hoagie parties, and I don't know if some of you remember that or not, but Brian and I, having grown up back in the East, um, hoagies were something that we really enjoyed, and we, we tried to transition that out, out to you folks. Um, I remember each Sunday evening, the youth would come over to our home, and we would have a time of fellowship and games and stuff with them, and we really enjoyed that, and that led to um, us also being able to go on some youth retreats with them. And we had a great time um, spending time um, between the two of us. We're, we're both still in contact with some of the young people that were in that group. And we have enjoyed just hearing from them and seeing how God has worked in their lives over the years. Uh, for me personally, one of my favorite memories was uh, going bass fishing at Classy's Pond. And every now and then I would just get a hankering to pick up my fishing pole and go out there and try to fish, and I really enjoyed that. The biggest event for our family in the time that we were out in New Glarus was the adoption of our two children. And um, it was a thrill for us to be able to work through the Evangelical Child and Family Agency there in, uh, I think it was the Waukesha area, and be able to adopt both Alyssa and Matthew. And they are both doing well. Um, Alyssa actually turns 39 this year, which is, which is shocking to us, um, that we have a child that old, and she has uh, three children, a 10-year-old daughter, an eight-year-old son, and a six-year-old son. And uh, we enjoy living near them, being able to be part of their lives. That's, that's important to us. Uh, Matthew is also working very hard. He has become an assistant produce manager at a chain of stores called Publix. I don't think they've made their way up north yet, but they're uh, relatively um, popular down in Florida. And uh, he's hoping in time, sometime to become a manager. He's still single, so if there are any young ladies out there <laughs> that are, are looking for a nice young man, we, we have one for you. Um, Sounds like a sales pitch. Well, oh well. Um, uh, Brian asked me to share what I am presently doing now. I have stayed in education over the years. I've taught full-time and uh, done subbing here and there. Presently, I'm in a position in a first grade class for maternity leave, 
So I started this school year with these with 19 little first graders and I will end up my time with them sometime around the middle of October and that. So uh, I'm staying busy with that. I enjoy the flexibility of a subbing schedule and um, I also assist Brian in the life group that he teaches at our church. I take attendance and I plan socials and stuff like that. So that's pretty much where I am at, at this point and I will turn things back to Brian. Well, let me just clarify when Debbie said that she is a substitute teacher uh, for a uh, maternity leave, she is subbing for another lady that's on maternity leave. I just wanted to make that. I, hope, <laughs> I don't think they're wondering about that. Okay. Anyway, uh, what I am truly thankful for is the faithfulness to the preaching of the gospel and faithfulness to the word of God of the New Glarus Bible Church over these 50 years. When the Lord directed our path there and uh, I was called, one of the things that stuck out to me uh, about the church itself was the incredibly spiritually minded leadership that we had. We had wonderful men and and some of them still there. I'm, I'm not going to try to mention names because mm -hmm. I know I'll leave somebody out, mm -hmm. but uh, I will mention this. Pete Schindler was the chairman of the, uh, the board at that time and uh, just a godly man who I love in the Lord and uh, certainly I'm looking forward to seeing him again someday and other men that served on the board as well. Um, I'm very, very happy and, and thankful to have been part of that. I remember that the leadership said to me that they had one goal for me and it wasn't to make the church grow in numbers. It wasn't to put on any special programs, though we would certainly be grateful if the Lord directed things that way. But they said to me this, you preach the word. And that was the most meaningful thing to me, and I have carried that with me throughout all our years of ministry. When we left New Glarus, we went to Farmington Hills, Michigan, served there at the Farmington Hills Baptist Church for a little over 17 years. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord redirected us to uh, the uh, Grace Baptist Church down in Pompano Beach, Florida. And we were there just a little over 11 years until my uh, retirement in 2016. And we moved to, to Georgia uh, as a result of our daughter and son-in-law and grandkids being here. So we're, we're just outside of Atlanta right now. Um, I think uh, there were things that, that occurred at the New Glarus that really were, were specially meaningful to me. And some of those things um, were special services that we held. Some of you might remember we had Harold Vaughn come and uh, he had uh, conducted revival services for us on several occasions. And uh, one year we had Debbie's dad, who is an evangelist, come to hold evangelistic meetings. And I'll let you just take a, a second to maybe mention something about that and your uncle as well. Yes, um, I enjoyed having my dad there and he came along with my uncle. Um, one of my unchurch memories of that point in time was when we taught them how to play a game called Dutch Blitz <laughs> over in the parsonage. And it was we played that with others from the church and it, it got so intense that my dad got a migraine <laughs> during during the afternoon. We had to had to take some medication. And then at one point my uncle also came back and he did um, an organ uh, concert for us because we had gotten the brand new Allen organ and that. And those are some of the memories I have of my dad and my uncle being able to join us there. Not many organs being uh uh, sold <laughs> and uh, used in churches anymore, but that really was a special time. We also had uh, the president of the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism, Dr. Wendell Kempton came and he helped uh, conduct some meetings with us, had a wonderful time of spiritual refreshment during those, those times. Um, one of the things that sticks out in my mind was when we had the Back to the Bible Quartet come. And I think some of you that are there right now will remember we packed the everything we had, every inch we had, packed the auditorium, used the choir loft, filled up chairs in the aisleway, filled chairs in the entrance, put people downstairs in the basement of the church, 
And basically all I could think of was, what if the fire marshal finds out about this? Um, came to find out he had come to the services. <laughs> and so when it was over, he came to me and he just looked at me and he said, don't do this again. <laughs> so we, we just had a wonderful time with that. That was, a, that was one of the great experiences we had. Another thing was our uh, participation in helping get the Greene County Pregnancy Center started. Had the opportunity to be on the board there and our church was involved. And I think it's under a new name now down in Monroe. And another one of the highlights was the Christian school that we operated. And uh, the, the, the people that led the school, Violet Goldhaug and uh, uh, Jerry Hansen, uh, Janet, Janet Keener, and uh, Debbie was involved. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, Jim, uh, Jim Henson, Jensen. Jensen was there, and uh, we we just had a wonderful time. I can remember we started by uh, we started the soccer team by combining with a little uh, school, a little Christian school down in I think it was Broadhead. We we didn't have enough players to to field a team, but between the two uh, the two schools, we were able to get enough players to play. And I can remember our first game was against Sun Prairie, which was a large school. They had all the accoutrements with soccer. Uh, we had t-shirts with uh, numbers pressed on them. <laughs> and we won, <laughs> we beat them. <laughs> I was, I was uh, on cloud nine for that whole time. <laughs> and we actually were invited to a tournament in Iowa and uh, we wound up uh, finishing two wins and one loss in that tournament. And our boys came home with the, um, the it, it was, yeah, the sportsmanship trophy. It was the largest trophy in the entire event. And uh, we, just, we just had a great time with that. Um, all I can say is we have had wonderful friendships in all of our churches, but we have never forgotten our friends in New Glarus. And we love you very much, and we pray that God will bless you and that he will give you another 50 years of faithful ministry to the word and that the Lord Jesus Christ would be honored and glorified through the ministry there in New Glarus. God bless you all. That was great, really great. Is Pastor Glenn Andes here yet? Not yet. Okay, Pastor Walter Olson. Walter uh, was pastor here from 1994 until 2004, if we have that correct. So, Pastor Walter, please come up. Well, thank you. It is such a blessing to be here today and to share this time together. My wife and I have so many wonderful uh, uh, remembrances of our time here. It was only 10 years, but the 10 years uh, w went uh, by so very, very fast. Uh, I do have a little bit of, of uh, remember of the New Glarus Baptist Church, even before we were a pastor here. Uh, I preached at the... Um, Postville Church, one Sunday night, I don't, I don't even remember the day, but it was many, many years ago, and I was invited by, uh, what was his name? Where, oh yeah, okay, and I was the evangelist there, and he was working in the camp, and so he invited me to come and uh, preach on a Sunday evening in our way to Chicago for something. We did that, and that was a wonderful blessing for us. And then Ernie Rockstead's name has been mentioned. And uh, I didn't know Ernie Rockstead really well, but I heard him preach a number of times. As a matter of fact, he came to our church, uh, First Baptist Church in, uh, in Woodville at least once. And I knew about him and read some of his literature and so on. He also taught Bible school up at uh, uh, Camp Chatek in the, in the summertime sometimes. Well, uh, so uh, what I say, uh, my wife and I re remember our time here with very, very great uh, fondness. Maybe I can just kind of begin with a couple of uh, personal notes here. Some of you knew everybody who was here at that time, 
I uh, knew my wife, Betty Jean. I, I just wish for uh, with everything that she could be here, here today, but she has Alzheimer's, and the Alzheimer's has been coming on for I don't know how many years, but quite a number of years, and now when I go down to see her, I don't always know whether she knows me or not, but uh, we visit when we can, and she's in the Parkview uh, Rest Home in Woodville and being taken very, very well care of, and uh, we are very uh, thankful for that. I am now 87 years old, and when I come up here, one of the things that I am thankful for is this railing here. I preached at a few <laughs> auditoriums in the last few months when the steps were really, really uh, uh, steep like that. And it's not so bad going up, but trying to get that down that, those kind of uh, steps has uh, really uh, been a challenge. But I've been doing pretty well, and a few challenges along the way, but I'm thanking you for the good health that the Lord has uh, given to me. My ministry now, I've been the assistant pastor of the First Baptist Church in Woodville for most of the time that we lived back there in Baldwin, and I appreciated that. And uh, I, I have done quite a bit of preaching and teaching in other ch churches and so on. And I still write the uh, Sunshine uh, paper. I don't know if anybody remember that. For, uh, it was in some of the papers down here. One of the things that I remember about the Sunshine, I was visiting with Violet Gulhog one day, and we were talking about this particular uh, ministry, and I was doing it one way, and Violet said, well, why don't you call it a word of the wise? And that's what I did, started calling you it, and been doing that for, uh, for all the time now. And that article is in a number of uh, the uh, churches up in, the, in our uh, newspapers up in our part of our, our country. Uh, I, I, and I mentioned a bill in Eloise last night. I'm so thankful that the Lord has allowed me to live long enough to get to know him a little bit better. One of the uh, precious verses of my life, and it still is today, is in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. And that is uh, such a blessed uh, church and uh, 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 in reality to me. The church here has had a very great uh, ministry to us while we were here and continues to have a, a ministry to us, the cards that we receive and uh, things at that time. And one of the, uh, the things that I remember is that we were able to feel at home here. And that's because of uh, uh, things that we've heard already about uh, the love of the Lord and the centrality of Christ and that kind of a thing, and the overall joy and blessing of the Lord. Uh, I remember when Gail Vinge came home, we had never met her before, and she came uh, home from Erie and Jive, was landing in the airport in uh, Madison, and everybody was so excited to see Gail Vinge. Well, we went up there to see her, and I didn't know her for five minutes be, uh, before I knew that her uh, can change his uh, ministry and testimony and all of that kind of a thing. And she had been such a great ministry to us and to my wife particularly as well because she had a spirit of thanksgiving and joy that just radiated from her and we were so thankful uh, for that. One of the things that I appreciated here as well is being able to preach the Word of God without fear or conflict, you know, with anybody or anything else. And as somebody else has just said, uh, the, the ministry of the pastor is to preach the Bible, to preach the Word of God. And that's my desire. And, but you know, the strange thing is, not everybody wants to hear the truth of the Word of God. And I preach in various churches around the country where people, uh, you know, they kind of tolerate the Word of God. But when you talk about the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ in their life and who He ought to be in their life, somehow or other the conversation sometimes kind of changes. But I'm so thankful uh, for the emphasis upon the person of Christ and the fellowship that we have had for Him. I'm thankful that the church has ministered to us in so many different ways. I remember many years ago when we were here, I had a problem with arrhythmia. And I would get that sometimes once a week or sometimes more than that. Or sometimes I could go for a couple of months without that. But one time I had it and I would get so weak when I had that. And uh, 
one Sunday morning, I had it, uh, and I couldn't even walk across the, the street to the church. And so after uh, the service in the church, all the uh, staff, the deacons came over, and they had a word of prayer with me. And, you know, that's lived with me. I mean, that's been a certain uh, a wonderful blessing to me. But I remember something that Brother Dan Classy said to me at that time. He says, when we prayed for a pastor, we prayed for someone to minister to us. We also prayed for somebody that we could minister to as well. And boy, I tell you, I'm so thankful for that because it is a two-way street. The pastor ministers to the people, but the people minister to the pastor as well. So thank you uh, for uh, that. We've appreciated the ministry of uh, the church in so many ways. One experience that I remember, one day, uh, I called in the, in the home of Violet Gulhog, and her sister Geraldine was living there at that time, and I knocked at the door, and they came to the door, and went in, and they were sitting at the couch. Well, one was at one end, and one is at the other end. And in the, in the uh, space between them, and that Davenport, they had all kinds of letters uh, thrown out there, and there were missionary letters. And what they were doing was praying for the missionaries and responding to the missionaries. Uh, and uh, the thing about that uh, was the support of the missionary in the fellowship of the ministry was such a great and a wonderful thing. It wasn't just in words, but it was in reality. And I really appreciate that uh, ministry to so many people and to so, uh, me so many times. I can remember uh, when I was preaching, it got done in the morning often, and Violet would say something like this. She would say, well, it's a matter of abiding in the Lord. And it certainly is, and it certainly was, and it continues to be that uh, as well. My... Um, uh, one of the things I enjoyed here was the adult Sunday school class, and I really enjoyed teaching the adult Sunday school class, class, and we had really good participation in that. I like to have a lot of participation in that kind of a thing, and we talked about our walk in a relationship with the Lord, and I just uh, learned that uh, Brother Joe Heiser passed away. I hadn't known that before. And I remember one thing that Brother Joe said in the Sunday class one Sunday morning. He said something like this. He said, I wonder if Christian culture has not replaced the reality of Jesus in many lives and in churches today. And I thought about that, and I wrote a paper about that particular thing. But Christian culture replacing the reality of Christ, replacing the reality of Jesus. And that's the thing that I remember about this particular church and the ministry of the church that it has had. Uh, my wife worked in the um, uh, Awana for all of that time, I believe, and that was such a, a big, big blessing. You know, I could go on for a long time, but I, I would like to continue, or continue to conclude with a couple of, uh, of verses, if you don't mind. I was reading in my own devotions the other day, and I came across, I mean, I've read it many times before, but I thought this uh, exemplifies uh, really my heart and my desire uh, for this church to, and for every church that I have uh, a privilege to have a part in. And Paul says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 1, he says, For I want you to know what great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and as many as have seen, not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged by being knit together in love. And that's what the church really, in a sense, is all about, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. But the idea here is that we really know the mystery and the reality of God. And, and, and I thought it's, there was a time I was mentioning this to Bill last night and uh, graduated from the seminary. And, 
and uh, I could get a, a message and get, and get the intellectual part of it and all of that kind of a thing. But it wasn't until some time later that I recognized the um, importance of having the reality of God in my own heart. I want to preach the Word of God, but I want to preach the Word of God from my own heart. And that's such a, I think there's such a, a big difference there. But anyway, that's part of my uh, desire for the church. And then he goes on to say, in verse number three, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words, and we're running into a lot of that today, for though I am absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit. And you don't know how many times I have thought about this particular church over the years, again and again and again. And I'm so thankful for, um, how can I say it, the good thoughts that we've had, the blessed thoughts of the people here. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfast uh, your steadfast in faith in Christ. And that's kind of what it's all about, our steadfast and faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this church has had a ministry of being steadfast uh, in the, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say in verse number 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus in the Lord, so walk in him. And one of the blessings to me, even to be here today, is to see the number of people who are really walking with the Lord. I'm thankful uh, for the people that I knew uh, when I was here, here in the pit, in the pit people before the, the people who knew people who are here now as well. But the matter of really walking in the Lord, and that's a testimony to one another. We need that testimony to, testimony to one another in the Lord, uh, the community that walks it as well. And then he says, in verse number seven, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. And that's, uh, uh, you know, that's our reality. And that's our ministry. And that's my hope. And that's my desire for the continuing ministry of this church until the Lord comes. So thank you for being a friend. And th thank you for being such a blessing to my wife and I down through many years. Th not just during the 10 years that we, we were here, but for all of the time since that time as well. well and I look forward to another time to have maybe some kind of a, of a similar fellowship, who knows. So thank you again, good to be here. And thank you for the railing. Thank you so much, Pastor Olson. At this time, we have an opportunity to hear from Pastor Tom Schubrin. He was here from 2005 until 2018. Uh, we have Pastor Olson is here. Glenn, Pastor Glenn, I'm sorry, Pastor Glenn Andes. Come on up, Pastor Glenn. He was here from 1990 until 2000. So good to be here. My um, wife and I had the privilege of serving here for about 12 years, and we came because there was a Christian school here at the time, and uh, David and Barbara Wilson were looking at moving on to a, a different ministry venue, and um, we were, it was just God's timing, we were ready to leave uh, where we were down in Warren, Illinois, and... Um, we came up here, there was a conference, uh, came to the conference, and um, somebody said, are you interested in the position? I said, well, we'll pray about that. Uh, so we came, and it was a joy. Anita and I, my wife and I, uh, wrote down the names of uh, oh, a whole bunch of people that were here that we served with and uh, alongside of during those 12 years that we were here, and I see some of you are here. Uh, what a blessing it was, I know, for me to serve alongside um, Janet Keener in the Christian School Ministry, and uh, the blessing that it was to um, 
uh, to have her raise our, our boys up in those younger grades. Um, we weren't even sure when they said, would you be interested in coming? Um, and we said, we'll pray about it. But we, we felt like, okay, Lord, we'll, we'll come, uh, at least to check it out. And Joe and Donna Heiser were here at the time, and we shared in some venue, the, Bill, there were several venues in which we shared, I think, um, with the board, with a, with a wider group at the time. And one of those first times, and I had already resigned at the church in, in Warren, and bless his heart, Joe Heiser came up and shook my hand, and I felt something in his hand. And, you know, there was a $20 bill there, and um, it was like we had already resigned, and the Lord knew we, we were um, sort of financially tight, and God just moved upon Joe's heart, and he, he gave. Uh, we ended up coming. Bill, I remember you asking, um, what's one of the things that you can't stand or can't tolerate? You remember asking that question in one of the interviews? Um, and I, and I got to know these people. We had already known some of them through church softball, and we were involved, our church in Warren was involved in church softball, as was the church here. So we came. We bought an old farmhouse from Steve Rooksager out on County J, and it was a fixer-upper. We paid 35000 for it. It was a fixer-upper when we moved in, and it was still a fixer-upper when we, when we left 12 years later. <laughs> But my wife has that pioneer spirit, and we, we did a lot of fixing up. The boys learned construction from Tony Butler and Dan Classy and other guys that came alongside and said, well, we know how to do that. We'll help you with remodeling this room or putting in this window. The only source of heat in that old farmhouse was a wood furnace. And um, Steve Rooksager, the fellow who had sold us the place, said... Uh, there's wood on my property. I said, that's great. I don't have a chainsaw. I went out after, I was partway through the school day, partway through a school day here. I was here that, that fall, early fall, and I went out to be on the playground with the kids. Um, I looked in my car, and there was a chainsaw in a black case in my car. I said, Somebody put that in the wrong car. And I asked around, it's like, anybody know who that chainsaw belongs to? And somebody said, well, if it's in your car, it must be yours. <laughs> and I still, to this day, I mean, I have an idea, but I'm not sure who that chainsaw came from, but it came from the Lord, ultimately. And again, it was like the $20 from Joe because the Lord moved upon his heart, and, and he was willing to share that. And uh, working with Janet, who was willing to share some of her expertise, and, and whoever it was that shared that chainsaw. Well, I think it was Nikki and Dorothy. I, I'm not 100%, but I think it was Nikki and Dorothy, and th those of you who have been here, uh, were here in those years, knew Nikki and Dorothy. Well, I used that chainsaw, and my boys and I cut wood, but uh, we also played church softball, now for the Naguaras team, the competitors. And there was a collision at home plate where I was playing catcher. And I was the littlest guy on our team. And the biggest guy on their team was running from third base. And we had a collision at home plate, and I broke four ribs. Well, I didn't. He broke them. Uh, <laughs> and I got uh, you know, a ride to the hospital in an ambulance and uh, not anything I really wanted and x-rays and sent me home with one of those <gasps> rib belt things, you know. I think it was the next day, Jim and Joyce Jensen called, and I had slept in my bed that night, you know, got up that morning and eh, took a shower. Uh, but Jim and Joyce called and, and said, you might need a, a lounge chair to sleep in for a few days. We have one that we'll bring over. I, I'm pretty sure that was you guys, wasn't it, that brought that lounge chair over? I, I think it was, 100%. Now that I see your nod, yes. And then somebody from church called us and said, um, it's this time work, we're coming over, a bunch of us to go out in the woods and cut wood for you for the winter. 
And people from church just descended on our old farmhouse and the ladies brought baked goods and the men went out in their pickup trucks with their chainsaws and they cut firewood. And I don't think at the beginning of the heating season ever during our years there, uh, I don't think we ever had that much wood down in our basement for the heating season. And Tony Butler used to let me go cut wood on his property, uh, Bernie, and um, the people in the church here were very welcoming, very giving, very caring. Um, will I embarrass you if I say anything, Joanne? Somewhere along the line, Steve and Joanne, who had the, the radiator shop, right? And, and they put their employees on as associate members of the Sam's Club membership. And they, they put us on, you know. That, I didn't work for Steve, but <laughs> if I dug out my wallet, it still says on my Sam's Club membership, which they still pay for every year, and we've been gone 23 years. <laughs> and they have kept us on that Sam's Club membership, there Steve, as associate members. You don't know what a blessing that has been, especially when we had, you know, living in Gratiot there and seven kids and yeah, just. We loved our uh, relationships that we built here and still value every one of those. I'll close with uh, just one memory and that is when we were between, Dr. Olson hadn't come yet, and um, and so for, I don't know, a few years, I, I don't remember how long, um, but I served as interim pastor, and the church asked if I wanted to go for the position, and I just prayed about that and didn't really feel that I, I should at that time. But uh, I was in the baptismal tank doing a baptism, and I never thought about it. I'm standing in the water, and there's a microphone up here, and I reached up and grabbed the microphone and, and pulled it close and was, was talking, and Kim Markham, bless his heart, he raced up there and, and grabbed that. He said, you want that closer, Pastor? I'll hold it. I'm not in the water. <laughs> oh. I could probably tell stories about all the people on our list. Um, we love you all, and it's been, for us, it was uh, just a, a, a blessing to look back and to rejoice in the goodness of God as we were here for those 12 years. Thank you all so much. Okay, now we have the opportunity to hear from Pastor Tom Schubrin. Uh Many of you know that Tom and I have a, a very uh, special relationship. He is the father-in-law of our daughter, and uh, we love him very much. Thanks for coming, Tom. Well, a year ago, almost just... Over a year ago, I was here preaching at a funeral, and uh, boy, it brought back a lot of memories. I just took a tour of the church, saw all the changes that have been made, um, and all the changes that we brought in, and when Darryl, Pastor Darrell first contacted me about coming back, it was like the word that God gave me was change, and which is ironic because Proverbs says a fool's heart is inclined to change. But when we got called down here in 2005, uh, the church called a maintenance man. I was a missionary working as a maintenance man up at Camp Forest Springs. And there's basically three things that a maintenance man does. First of all, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it is broke, you either have to work with it and fix it or replace it. And that was kind of the attitude I had coming down to the church. What worked, don't fix it. 
If it needs tweaking, tweak it. If we need to add some things, add some things. And that will never change because whether it's Pastor Darrell or myself or whatever, what the church looks like today, it ain't going to look like 10 years from now. And what it looks like today isn't what it looked like 10 years ago because as society changes, we keep changing with it, never changing the gospel, but working in different ways to meet people. Um, I was so much different than Pastor Olson. We still are. You know, Pastor Olson shows up in a suit, I show up in jeans and boots. And I'll never forget, Glenn out of appreciate this, the first day I walked through the Christian school and Anna Classy looked at Rebecca Jensen and went, he's wearing jeans! And absolutely had a coronary right there on the spot. And I'm like, wow, what did I get myself into? But we, we had a blast, and I love having fun. I came from camping ministry, and I wanted to bring camping ministry into the church to reach people. And I'll never forget, we were here maybe three months, and I'm not going through the whole 14 years we were here, um, or 13, whatever it was. It was just under 14. But about three months into it, I got a hold of some friends, and we did a college and high school rock climbing trip at Devil's Lake. And we had all the gear and everything, and it is who you know, by the way. And I'll never forget Livy Classy. And she was only in junior high at the time. And she was sitting there like that. And Dan's like, what's the matter? And she goes, by the time I'm old enough to have any fun, Pastor Tom will be dead. <laughs> We had a lot of fun since then, and I'm not dead, but uh, we, we brought in a lot of stuff, and uh, it's not, it, some of the things still remain today, some of the things don't. Um, we fasted and prayed over a lot of things, and uh, you know, one of the things that we changed, um, tried to do it slowly, but was music. And this is not Becky I'm talking about, okay? But when I first mentioned, you know, instead of these mournful dirges, can we have a little joy in our worship? And I kid you not, she went like this and scowled at me and said, if you can smile while you're singing, you're sinning. <laughs> I said that wasn't Becky. And uh, we've been sinning a lot ever since. But uh, it's been fun. You know, we had a blast. Uh, we changed one of the things that was mentioned. Uh, we went from Postville Bible to the Baptist Bible Church, back to the Bible Church. That happened during uh, my tenure. And uh, I will never forget our first deacon meeting. I was here like two weeks or something like that. And one of the deacons brought up the name change. And I was like, <gasps> you got to be kidding. They'll crucify me. No matter whose idea it was, they're going to blame me. And I had no problem with it, but I said, let's put that on the shelf for a few years at least until I get established a little better. But uh, just out of curiosity, um, these are a couple of the programs that we brought in over the years while I was here. We brought in the Taekwondo. We brought in Zumba. We brought in the Blood Drives. Uh, we had Friday night basketball, and we'd have uh, testimonies at halftime. Uh, we continued with softball, church league softball. That was blast. We brought in CEF five-day clubs. Uh, we tweaked and continued on with the Awana program. We entered into, tried to break down the walls with the community. Um, we had Good Friday service, community Good Friday services. Uh, the baccalaureate services, um, continued on with the services up at the Nuglera's home, um, had family fest, uh, I became a chaplain um, and would do regular jail services and one-on-ones and just an incredible ministry there. Uh, I was a, a, a chaplain with AMVETS, uh, we brought in hunter safety classes, we had wild game feeds here, uh, introduced a lot of different mission trips, some of which continue today, like the Beach Point trips. 
uh, got involved a lot with camps. One of the cool things is after a lot of fasting and prayer, we were able to pay off this building in record time where you sit. Uh, it was great. Um, and I think what excites me the most of our time here is, you know, we, we brought in a lot of programs, but programs don't reach people for Christ. Individuals reach people for Christ. And it's our testimony, it's our testimony in the community, it's actually being willing to open our mouth and share the love of Christ and it's not about programs. Programs come, programs go, this works for a while, it doesn't work after a while, you gotta change it up. Um, you know, we had programs, Awana and stuff, we had people getting saved. Personally, um, I had the privilege of praying with over 200 people to receive Christ during my time here. And that was just on an individual basis, a lot of it through the jails and other things. And that's not an attaboy in any way because I looked at the math. That's one person every six weeks. It should have been so much more. We're here to shore, share the love of Christ with a dying and lost world. Um, I was sharing this with a couple of people. This past month, I spent from the end of August till... Friday in Montana with our son and grandbabies and all that. Did a little elk hunting. And I was working for my son, and I found on this one particular day, I was driving a truckload of lesbian landscapers across Montana. And who could be further from a redneck preacher than a bunch of yoga-loving lesbians? And I'm like, Lord, I got an hour and a half drive one way with these gals. What am I going to say? And I started visiting, and it was very cold and awkward, and I thought, we got to find common ground. So I just explained to them that I'm just a lesbian trapped in a man's body. <laughs> they laughed, and we hit it off. From then on, we had great conversations, and I was really able to minister to them women. And sometimes we get what we expect people to be like and what they're like. We really need to just forget what they are and that they're people that Christ died for. My wife experienced the same thing. She flew out there and then drove back with me. And she was sitting on the plane with somebody that a lot of times the church might turn their back on. In other words, he kind of looked like maybe he slipped and fell face first into an open tackle box. I mean, he had hardware hanging all over his face. And my wife had just a wonderful conversation with him, spiritual conversation. And we're in a world that needs Jesus Christ. And the purpose of this church always has been and always will be or should be, and it is right now, pray and it continues, is a hospital for the lost, a hospital for the church, I should say, and just a landing pad to take off and go out as individuals to reach this community for Jesus Christ. That's what the church is. That's why we came here. That's what we did while we were here. That's why Daryl's here, Pastor Daryl's here. Sorry, I knew him as Daryl before he was your pastor. Um, we go back a ways. And, you know, that's what it's about. So as you guys move forward and you continue to make changes and drop things that don't work, fix things that do, and don't touch what really does, you know, uh, I just pray for you guys. God bless you all, you know, for what your future will hold, you know. All right? You didn't cut me off? <laughs> At this time, we're going to take like about two to three minutes, allowing you to stand, say hello to someone that you may have just seen across the room, and then we're going to get back to, um, we're going to have Liz come up and, and share her testimony. Take about two to three minutes. Franzi, she's going to share a testimonial of, of her time here at the New Glarus Bible 
church's school. Okay. Here we go. Hold it a minute. Okay. If you would please, gentlemen and ladies that are talking in the back, please find a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Dan, classy. Oh. Well, my name is Liz Keener Franzi, Liz Franzi. Um, I put the Keener in there so that you know that I'm one of the Keener clan. So I'm actually number four, um, the youngest of Eugene and Janet Keener. Um, maybe a little bit about me. Some of you don't, don't know me, but others that are the older set uh, may want to hear an update on my life. I was... Um, a student here at New Glarus Christian School. Um, I graduated in 1989, so that meant that I was part of this church um, from birth to 1989. Um, this particular building then um, for that number of years, the 50 years um, that you guys have been here. But um, when I left here, I went to college at Northwestern College in Roseville, Minnesota, and I met my husband there. We were married in 1992 um, by Pastor Andes, and uh, every once in a while when I'm home um, every month to um, stay with my parents for a week, um, I'll bump into you guys here and there, and that's why it's fun to be able to, to connect again, and, and that's a lot of fun. So. My husband and I, then, if you've done the math, have been married for 31 years. We have five children, um, plus um, a bonus daughter that we were able to kind of raise into adulthood um, in her older teen years. And we have two grandbabies, um, so a lot has, a lot happens um, in, in 31 years. Um, but as I said, I was a student here um, from 1976 until 1989, so pretty much the inception of the school, I think it was 1975 is what Patty had said um, this morning that the school had started. And um, I guess a way to, to kind of describe it is that church and school in this building was kind of my life. Um, we, we were here six days a week um, as a family. I mean, we farmed as a family, and we came to church, and we went back home, and we f did whatever chores, and we came back on Sunday night, and we started it, you know, Monday all over again. My mom, as you've heard, um, was a teacher, and so we would all pile in the car after morning chores, and <laughs> we would come to school, and, um, the network of, of people, it wasn't just the families that went to this church, but it also included um, just a lot of, of um, families that would come drive to, I mean, a long ways they would drive. And so for our family, that meant my mom and dad had a very large station wagon. You probably all remember the Keener mobiles around the years. Uh, we had a very large station wagon, and although my mom was a safe driver, we did not all have seat belts because back then you didn't have to have seat belts. And we would have um, students come to our farm, so like the eastern side, the Broadhead and what Albany and that area, um, kind of Attica, Brooklyn area, would come to our farm. And then we would leave from our farm, stop by the Stroms, pick up those kids, and, and some throughout the years, even in Monticello. So she was a bus driver, really, and we would have everybody, even sitting on laps. I mean, we, we had all three sections of that car packed um, as we would come. So that was my life. That's what I remembered. I remember, uh, you know, just service in that way. Um, and we were here six days a week. And so when I think of that, it was a family ministry, right? Um, 
but we knew this building. Let me tell you, being here six days a week, we, um, I think I would just say we just knew every corner of the building as, as kids <laughs> because our parents spent so much time here too, just talking and being together as families. So we knew you know, which door squeaked and which steps were a little more hollow than other ones as we were tearing around the corner and we had to be like these back steps here. So I don't know if you guys, those who weren't here bef with the original building, but kind of where the steps would go upstairs, that was the back of the building. Um, so the original building that we had, I mean, we, we spent a lot of time with hide and seek and, and all of that. So those are, the, the building was built, I was just a little one, um, but we, we kind of had all those, those little memories. I mean, we knew the bushes outside and we knew how, how many seconds it took to quick ring the bell and then go hide under a bush. Um, we, we knew all of that, which ones were a little higher off the ground that Nicky Marty would painstakingly you know, trim and, and be, do all the mowing. Um, so it really was, this was our life. This, it, it, we knew nothing different than those, those families with Butlers and Kinsey's. I don't know if you guys remember um, Ed and Esther York and Ed and Claudia Hirsch and all of those, they, they, were, um, they were just one large family. We were the body of Christ um, as we, we um, then came here also as students at the school. And I think that um, all the times that we had as family together, it just made sense as we were raising, you guys were, we, you guys were raising um, your children up to know and love the Lord. Um, and as that was placed on Pastor Phoebe's heart to start the school, that really was what it was all about, was to raise their families up in the Lord. Um, but this, the times out on the playground to the times when we're just watching our parents fellowship with each other, um, I mean, there's a lot of shenanigans that did go on. I don't know um, if, if Rand really remembers this, but there were even times when we would all be out in the back. This was a past year. I don't know if you guys... I'm thinking back to my youth, so I'm assuming that all of you guys understood what it looked like too. But this back portion here was a was a pasture, so where pastor's house was, that was that would end, and that would be an electric fence. Then there was no street that went through there. Um, but they had an electric fence, and so we we did a kind of I don't know we what did we call it, Randa, a chain of death where we would you know hang on to hands and 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 have a wet crab grass, you know, and touch that electric fence, and um, we usually had the littlest one at the end, and they didn't know what was going to happen, and, <laughs> and then they did. <laughs> that, was, that was fun, wasn't it, Rand? I mean, we were just, yeah. Poor Rhoda, she might have gotten, Rand's youngest sister might have gotten the brunt of that a few times, I don't know. Um, not sure, but... Uh, it works, but those are just some of my, my earliest memories of, of the church building in general. Um, I think when it comes to the Nuglaris Christian School, um, as a little one, I remember um, the preschool. I think Patty was saying that that was um, in the earlier years, I think before the, ch the actual Christian school started, it was just a preschool. But I remember setting that up in the basement down here every Sunday night. Um, they would have rugs and a little wooden play structure. And then as the, the Christian school started for the older kids, upstairs in the sanctuary then, you'd have Sunday night church, and then we would set up the, the desks with all the little dividers with each of the students. But we did that as a family. So when we're saying we families that hung out together all the time here at church, that was what we were doing. We were worshiping God Sunday evening, and then before we headed home, um, we would set up um, the school for the next day. So on, on Monday morning, it was set up for the school. Um, so that meant those families who went to the church were really serving for many of the other students who didn't necessarily 
um, you know, come to this church, but it was a matter of this is what we do to set up the day for the, um, for the, or for the week, set up for the week for the school. Um, I think that probably a few years in, it kind of switched where the older ones were down and then the younger ones were up as the school grew. Um, I, I really don't remember how big the school got, but probably somewhere around 60 students is probably the, the biggest that it got. But that's all that God had room, we had room for. That's what God had provided. Um, so I think that that's probably, I could be off there, but I think some of the longstanding teachers were already mentioned. Um, so Violet Gouldhaug, who is the wife of Harold, um, and um, Geraldine Hansen, who was the sister of Violet Gouldhaug. She was a longstanding teacher. Um, David Wilson, um, as Glenn was saying, was here when I would have been here. And of course, um, my mom and Jim Jensen um, was here um, as a single guy. Uh, he was hired and uh, I kind of remember a little bit about, so my, my oldest sister went out to Faith Baptist Bible College, which is where Jim graduated from, and Joyce was out there in nursing school, and I kind of remember like maybe some chocolate chip cookies kind of like traveling our way, because, oh, if Joe, if you are going home this weekend, would you mind taking these to Jim? Um, do you remember that? Yeah, sending those. And then eventually, um, Joyce came our way. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit as a side note there, too. When we talk about how God orchestrates things, Jim and Joyce would not be here if it weren't for the New Glarish Christian School. Jim came here to teach at the school. And Joyce came because Jim was teaching at the school. And she got a job here. And you must have liked it because you stayed. <laughs> but God did that. God, God orchestrates that way. And that's how the ministry of New Glarus Christian School brought Jim, um, by God's grace, here too. So just a little side note there. Um, but I think two of some of the others that maybe weren't long-standing teachers but volunteered in a lot of ways. I know Marge Classy um, would volunteer with some art um, classes. Uh, I remember um, actually watching some of the, your kids. I think Eileen and Ellen and Johnny probably when you were um, in classes and um, that was always fun because, you know, what what student doesn't want to get a free pass to watch little kids, right? That was a lot of fun. Um, and I think um, another person that was kind of a mainstay, volunteered at least once a day uh, or once a week, um, would be Sylvia Purcell. Um, and she would have been the daughter of Anna Kepler, who owned the land that this building was built on. So she also was um, a large um, part of the, the school uh, volunteer system. And um, I, sp I spent quite a bit of time actually um, at Sylvia's house because I would stay at her house um, when we had a WAN a midweek um, so that my mom wouldn't have to drive me back and forth. Um, I would just stay, stay at her house. So it's, it's kind of when, you, when I was younger, I don't think I appreciated the fact that we had. Um, the, those women in our church who were just being obedient to God's call to help raise up children in the Lord. And she watched it in her mother, right? And then she herself um, was participating in, in that um, as well as just, you know, just opening her home up to somebody who, who wanted to go to Awana. Um, and yet that was, that was the way that I was able to go. Um, but I think, you know, what was God really doing with the school? Um, you know, what was he up to? What was he up to when he put that on Pastor Phoebe's heart? And as I was thinking about that, I'm wondering if I perhaps can um, propose an idea that maybe it was just God's 
way of caring for um, and maybe showing favor um, on our families um, as they had a heart to grow their children in the Lord and in that to bring him much glory. Um, I just think that he chose to use that school for 37 years, I think is what Patty said, that that's the school was operating. Um, but that was really a means of grace, really, to care for the families, to equip individual students um, and those families. That's a pretty amazing thing. That's amazing to think that God had done that. And you have to remember, like I said, not all these families went to this church. So not all of these students were coming from families that treasured Jesus. That was an outreach to the community because those little ones, or sometimes older ones, sometimes they just weren't a good fit in other school settings, and we were a smaller setting, and we were able to come alongside of them with God's grace and mercy and be able to say, you may not fit there, but we're going to help you fit here. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't, right? But we were willing to say, we're going to love you for who you are and we're going to teach you where you're at. Um, and so a lot of, a lot of what the New Glarus Christian School ministry was, was reaching some of those harder to reach families because their hard to reach kids came here. Um, and I think that that in and of itself um, was just a ministry to the community, the surrounded community, you know. And I also think about those who were well-grounded in good established families that we, that came here or that attended church here. And to think that we were able to, the school was able to equip them to then go out from there. So whether they're still living in the county or whether they're still living in the country, but we know that many of them have gone, you know, into global places. Many of them were mentioned um, this morning. But to think that we were raising our, our children and then our children's children, many of them, second, you know, generation came here. But even those who, children didn't come here, we were still equipped, well equipped, I might add, because of the biblical worldview that we were taught with. Um, and we were taught by Holy Spirit infused teachers. Let's, let's just say that. We were, every day, we were, it was just modeled in front of us who Christ was in their life, who they wanted Christ to be in our lives, and allowed us to just watch them. There's that mentoring going on. And that was a beautiful thing, to be able to, to see that. And so although each student had that individual education, right, and the, the, the whole reading and arithmetic and all of that, um, I think that it just colored our, our love for learning and the knowledge that we would have that would be grounded in God's word. So everything that we were learning was filtered through that. Um, and that was an important lesson um, to also for us to know that we were um, everything that we were going to learn in our future needed to be filtered through the grid of God's word. Um, but I think that the New Glarus Christian School really had its hand in raising up uh, students, men and women, who would um, just love God and love people, raise their children to love God and to love people. Um, and that's where we see the spreading of the gospel wherever you go, right? The Great Commission, that's the passing down of. And that started for me and for my siblings, you know, for the Butlers, for the Kinseys. That's where it started was knowing that we had that foundation and we're able to then pass that on to um, other generations. And there's no doubt that God used the Naglaire Christian School to do that um, as a means of his grace, no doubt. Um, he didn't, um, I mean, he just, he used it to just unfold his, his story of redemption in each one of us. Um, and I just, I think about um, 
He was just an Ephesians 3.20 God, right? He did exceedingly, abundantly more than, than those who started the school could even ask or think. Um, and he did that, and he did that um, for his glory, right? So I think if I wrap that up, I would say to God be the glory, great things he did in the New Claris Christian School um, for those 37 years. And I'm, I'm grateful to be part of that, um, and I'm grateful for all those who um, poured their life into that and teaching um, the students well beyond after you know, 1989 when I left. Um, that was still going on. So I'm grateful to God for that. I'm grateful that we were able to use this building um, and that God had provided the building for that. Okay, so Alan Isley is the chairperson of our deacon board. He told me that he is going to override my authority to pull him off the stage. So... <laughs> Um, we'll see. <laughs> he, he got me out of the way, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to share mostly about the missions outreach of the church. Since the age of 10, I've had an interest in foreign missions, and one of the persons that influenced me that was Uncle Walt Olson. Uh, Pastor Olson's uncle was a missionary to India with team, and he was a missionary at the Bible camp I went to when I was in high school, came back. He was, he was what, six foot four, or like, like that, and uh, a, a, quite a large man, and in India they called him the pink giant. Well, he tells a story that one time he's at church, and they introduced him as a pink elephant. <laughs> so that's, but anyway, uh, so he was one of the missionaries that had influence. Well, I first came to this church in, for a missions conference in 1965. John Schoen, a missionary from this, that was supported by this church back then, we supported him until his home going just this summer at age 99. And he ministered uh, the word uh, to, to, to prisoners. He had a prison ministry after coming back from Japan and he ministered just a few weeks before he passed, uh, still was writing letters. And his wife, Lucia, was in a nursing home. We had the, Isla and I went to his memorial service, and then we were able to visit Lucia in the nursing home. She is basically blind and uh, does not walk, but her mind is very clear. She remembered things that uh, we were quite surprised. She remembered even about our daughter having MS. But anyway, at that missions conference, I just looking at the table over there, the offering for the whole conference for three couples is $229.85. There's been inflation since then. <laughs> the dollar went a whole lot farther. But anyway, uh, when I first came, I uh, attended that missions conference and they ha haven't been able to get rid of me since. But anyway, uh, I became part of the fellowship. When I had come, I had grown my first beard. It was sort of a Amish style. Ferd Statler, that would be uh, Gene Williams' father-in-law, cheesemaker, and he looked at me and talked to me after. He says, well, how'd you get here? He says, I drove my car. <laughs> <laughs> so he was mistaking my identity a little bit there. Well, then when we had a, uh, Patty mentioned our commissioning service to going over uh, before we went to Arabia, to Lebanon for language school at the commissioning services. My dad was at the commissioning service. My dad at, came to the Lord at my graduation from Briarcrest in, in the spring of 65. Well, anyway, Anna Kepler, Grandma Anna, was talking to my dad, and he says, when, when I first came, he said, he had this beard, but then he shaved it off. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she probably thought I was a hippie. But anyway, members of this church have been very uh, faithful in missions outreach. We had, they they took, on, took us on as support. They commissioned us as missionaries, as they did some of the other people that were in the church that went out. And they support us by prayer, and by letters, and financially. Well, one of the people that wrote letters to us is Eugene Keener. He, you, you probably, you younger ones probably don't know about aerograms. We didn't have, you couldn't text, you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, email and that sort of thing back then. We didn't have that. 
But his Sunday's aerograms will take about two weeks to get to the Middle East, but they always had popcorn grease on them. Because <laughs> he would be, you know, he'd be eating popcorn while he wrote these letters. But anyway, that was, in, and uh, another one that we really met through that was uh, Doris Classy. We didn't know her before when she, she would write to us as well, and perhaps some others. But here, the, you know, missions has been important to both for the believers, both at uh, Postal Bible Church and then at New Glarus Bible Church. They've been very generous in their giving to the local work as well as around the world. You know, the sun never sets in our ministry, and if you didn't have a chance to look over there at the missions table, we got listed there our missionaries or the prayer cards on the board, and they do reach around the world as well, uh, a very big variety of ministries, of people we support, and, the, and so over these many years. And another thing I'll say, is once, once uh, faith promise giving was introduced to this mission, I do not believe we've ever missed giving support to our missionaries and what's been promised to them. And pro it's a promise made to the Lord, and that, that's for God's glory. And on that faith promise, it's we depend on God to supply the needs of the ones who give. And he has done this over these many years. And we, we thank the Lord for that. In fact, the treasurer just told me today that the October remittance went out this week. And so we just thank the Lord for those who continue to faithfully give and, and God supplies their needs. I'll just briefly mention here, we have missionaries in Taiwan, Bangladesh, Mexico, France, Brazil, uh, to Spanish-speaking people in uh, Phoenix and Latin America, Bethel University campus, Iwana missionary for Minnesota, southern Minnesota and Wisconsin, Ukraine, that's also these missionaries minister in Asia and Uganda, Friends of Israel ministry to Israel, Shepherds College at Union Grove, uh, Don Shire Ministries International, which minister have support, especially widows and orphans in India, in Roatan, Honduras, and in Haiti. And also now they're also doing some relief work, I think in Poland with uh, Ukraine uh, uh, refugees. Also uh, Hope Radio in Togo, West Africa, Camp Beach Point, Michigan, and, and Evidence for Faith, one of our newest missionaries, which is education and, you know, from creation to uh, just what you find in the ground and all that sort of thing. And then we still have like su support for two, gra or two retirees, Lucia Schoen and uh, Judy Parker. And now I have here uh, some letters I want to read from missionaries that sent greetings to the conference. And this first one comes from Jean and Shelley Anderson with Kids Alive International in Taitung, Taiwan. So dear friends at New Glarus Bible Church, we rejoice with you in your completion of 50 years of bringing the light of Christ to New Glarus and beyond. In our eyes, you are fulfilling 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. When I first read Psalm 57.10 in your announcement of this celebration, I thought, yes, your love is great, reaching to the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the skies. That what can be said of God is true in a sense of you shows that you are truly imitating our beloved Savior. And the next one, this is a little longer. This is from Jonathan and Barbara Baker. Of course, Barbara grew up in the church and the school, and she and her husband are in uh, Pueblo, Mexico. Uh, it says, Dear NGBC, with great joy, Jonathan, I greet you as you celebrate the 50th anniversary of NGBC. We would love to have be there, but Niglaris is a bit of a drive from our home here in Puebla. God led my family to NGBC while you were still meeting in Postville. My earliest memories date back to the new church building in Niglaris. I feared the basement with the labyrinth, labyrinth of thick, heavy maroon curtains, creating multiple classrooms for Sunday school. Thankfully, that fear dissipated when my siblings and I reached the big carpet at the back of the room to sing Sunday school songs with Patty. We celebrate with you God's faithfulness in providing gifted and dedicated people to accurately teach the children of NGBC the Bible throughout the years. Many of the pivotal roots of my spiritual formation began through NGBC and the Christian school in the basement. 
I attended kindergarten through high school. The consistent Bible teaching as well as the emphasis on missions greatly impacted my life. Although the pews are no longer, no longer grace the old auditorium, I still remember which one our family occupied when God called me to be a missionary nurse as, as the elders prayed over Gail Vinge in 1976. She was about to embark on her career as a missionary nurse in Papua. I was six. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Great Commission, local and global. Praise God for his faithfulness to provide excellent pastors, elders, teachers to lead NGBC according to the biblical mandate. I also praise God for his faithfulness to provide a strong foundation of prayer at NGBC. I personally learned from watching others in this as well as being the recipient of much prayer. And it continues as a married couple here in Mexico. Thank you for your prayers and for your support. You have been faithful and have preserved or persevered through many difficult times. God's faithfulness has never failed. What a joy to remember the great things he has done. What a joy to see his work in and through you, rejoicing today with you as you celebrate God's steadfast love and faithfulness to NGBC. Jonathan and I would send our warmest greetings and celebrate with you from afar. With love, Jonathan and Barbara Baker. Okay, so next one is from uh, the Hillebrands uh, in Ukraine. And I, I mentioned a little bit about them and the type of ministry, but then he says, Dear Niglaris Bible Church family, we rejoice with you in celebrating God's faithfulness to your church these past 50 years. What a milestone and testimony of his goodness and grace. We know that a lot has transpired over these many years. Many have come to Christ. Many have been discipled. Others have moved on and gone home to heaven. What a reunion it will be one day in the presence of the Lord. We have been connected with your church for almost the past 25 years when we first came to your church to raise support to go to Ukraine as missionaries. At the time, Randy was the pastor of the Bark River Bible Church in Bark River, Michigan, up in the UP. We have so appreciated your faithful prayer and financial support over the years, as well as your additional gifts to help Ukraine during this terrible time of war. May you have a blessed celebration, followed by many more years of faithful service. Your brother in Christ, Randy and Annette Hillebrand. This comes from uh, Bruce and Janet Scott with Friends of Israel. They now live in, uh, in Surprise, Arizona. This is Janet Scott, uh, no, I don't read that part. Greetings, brothers and sisters at NGBC. We thank God and give you our congratulations for 50 years of service to the Lord in your present building. As your celebration theme declares, he is faithful. We have fond memories of our visits with you. They go back many years. We remember the first time our family went to NGBC. You were having a conference and invited Bruce to speak. Our son Reuben was a toddler. After the morning service and lunch break, Reuben was tired, but he wouldn't take a nap. Bruce had started speaking in the afternoon session. Reuben wasn't cooperating with me in the nursery, so I took him outside to get out his wiggles. When we came back inside, Reuben, ma Reuben managed to slip away from me, and he entered the open doors of the sanctuary. Bruce was still speaking. Reuben was standing in the center of the aisle and saw Bruce at the pulpit. Before I could grab him, Reuben started walking towards towards Bruce and yelled out, Hi, Daddy! <laughs> I was embarrassed to say the least. That was exactly the impression I wanted to give for our first visit. I was thankful that you overlooked that humbling moment and still took us on for support. Reuben now has a toddler of his own. We'll see if this incident comes back to haunt him. <laughs> Thank you for your faithful prayers, encouragement, and support through the years. We've been blessed by your partnership in our ministry. May God give you another 50 years in your building to teach the word, encourage one another, and reach the unsaved with the good news of Jesus. Love, Bruce and Janet Scott. Okay, this one is from a former missionary. David Carley grew up in New Glarus. He wasn't a member of this church, but when he went to uh, Ecuador, South America with HCJB, not the radio, but uh, the medical ministry they had there. He was a a hospital pharmacist, and they live down in Racine. Hello, Alan and Iola. Thanks so much for the invitation and for keeping in touch. We are out of the state for the first two weeks in October and unable to attend, 
someone in the family, okay, it's me, is turning 70, and we're having a family get-together in Tampa, Florida. Uh, our seven grandkids and three and their parents will be there, and we look forward to a good reunion time. I have retired from being on staff at our local church as the last of November. It has been quite, quite the debates when we try to figure out what day of the week it is. We're still active. I mean, they don't know if it's all these Saturdays, and they know what day it is, so they get being retired. <laughs> but anyway, they uh, we're still leading, are still active leading the senior ministry at our local body of believers, and do not regard retirement as meaning inactivity to put out the passion. Trust you folks are doing well. And we thank God for the 50 years of faithfulness for your, for your, your congregation in New Laris, and him and Dave. This is, this is from a different type of missionary. Dan, and uh, Wells was mentioned. Dan was our WANA commander. He was, like I say, on the search committee when he called Pastor Darrell. And uh, they're down in the Muscatine, Iowa area. And this is what he wrote. We wish we could join you for the NGBC's 50th anniversary celebration, which is really a celebration of God's blessing of 50 years of building his church in New Glarus. What a privilege it has, is to be used by God in such a great way. However, our Awana Hayride is this Sunday. In Iowa, we have no professional sports team, so we don't have to schedule such events around Packer games. <laughs> he, he's actually a Steelers fan. <laughs> and a Purdue fan, a graduate of Purdue University. So we are not able to attend in person. We rejoice with you and hope you enjoy a sweet time of homecoming as you celebrate God's blessing. What a sweet preview of heaven. As a family, we reflect on the numerous blessings showered on us by the church there, and we miss you all very much. The time we fellowship with you from 2013 to 2020 seemed like a mist but was a very formative time in our lives. We saw our youngest children come to faith in Christ there. We so enjoyed serving in Awana, and the times Dan was allowed to teach were an amazing blessing to him. God is so good. We were blessed to be a part of a body that showed the marks of the true church, uh, the true church Jesus said he would build in Matthew 16 and 18, confessing Christ as Lord and Savior as revealed by his word living separate of the world, triumphant through the cross, engaged in spiritual battle with the adversary, made up of true disciples of Jesus Christ, seeking purity of the body and always looking forward to the glorious return of Christ. May you continue in, some, in, in the same way for as many years as the Lord may tarry until his return, bringing us as many along as possible for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you all and cherish our many memories. Though physical miles separate us for a short time, we can look forward to future visits, but more importantly, to a glorious reunion in the presence of our Lord and Savior. Until then, be blessed and be encouraged all the more as we see the day approaching. Grace and peace, Dan, Kim, Andrew, and Alyssa Wells. Now I'm going to introduce a short video from uh, missionaries Wally and Karen DeSmet. And well, greetings to our dear friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings from Wally and Karen DeSmet here in Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, this is a wonderful celebration time for you all and how we wish we could be there too, but uh, just not possible to hop over there. Um, you have a, just a wonderful celebration. I, I, I have go way, way back there from uh, yeah. your beginnings and yeah, right. heading out to Bolivia with Lyle. And then over these years, how you've um, stood so faithfully. And, and so we praise God with you for his faithfulness to you in, in your community as you um, are are faithfully serving right there and then when Karen and I married you took me right in and we just thank you so much you've been so faithful to us may God bless you richly thank you for your prayers 
Thank you for your support. To have a fellow deacon, um, Bill Kinsey, come up and share. And um, really appreciate Bill. He provides the most in-depth and lengthy, thorough meeting minutes as secretary that I've ever read in my life. He does a great job as our secretary. They're called effusive. <laughs> That's what they are. Um, I overdo it. I don't like to miss many words, nor emotion, nor inflection, or suggestion. Mm. So then we consider them. I'm the secretary, obviously, of the church and of the deacon board. Uh, the letter from Dan Wells hit a point for me because pastor asked me to speak about the church. I am not talking about this building. This building is only the place we meet. The church where the people in Postville, the people that had the intentional vision of coming to New Glarus to minister here. And as some of you know, there's a little white church building up on the hill over here. Um, as you would come up 39, State Highway 39. And uh, the people in our group thought to put in an offer for that. Thank the Lord that Evangelical United Brethren church body refused. And Grandma Kepler, her big heart being a member of this, she offered her little farm here to us, the people of New Glarus really didn't want this here. We were a local state church. It was the only one until finally the Lutherans broke into town. Catholics had to leave here and go elsewhere to church. And God gave us property here. We even had floods here to handle, but the church body, the believers, the givers, no rich people, just in the Lord, they were very rich, and he moved in their heart to be able to give in a program called Bonds so that we could actually prove to the bank that we were good if we, they gave us a loan so we could do something here as a lighthouse for the community. The building became a lighthouse, but the people, as you were all talking earlier, are what made the work be alive. And that's what will continue and has continued for 50 years. And I thank God for that. Uh, that portion that Dan mentioned in Matthew 16, as pastor preached on it back a little while ago and made very clear, has been taken way out of context, of course. Uh, this is the conversation that uh, Jesus had with everybody that was surrounding him. Who do people say that I am? And of course, they came back with, this person says John the Baptist, this person says Elijah, uh, this uh, prophets, and so on. Okay? But then Jesus looked directly at the disciples, the people that traveled with him all the time, his crowd. Who do you say that I am? And Peter, of course, Peter, yeah, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So that's Peter saying who Jesus is. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. 
and I tell you this, you are Peter. So Jesus says, hey, you're Peter. But upon this rock I will build my church. How do I know that that's the case and he didn't have to say anything else? It wasn't Peter that he was going to build it on. Even though Peter was used after that at Pentecost to preach a mighty word. Ephesians 2.20 says, With Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone. So, who's the rock upon which it was built? Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. That's been the position that this body of believers in investing their lives, their goods, can you imagine paying off originally? We had some people that did leave us goodly amounts of money in their wills because they loved the work. They were part of the body of believers, the church, the church family. And then later, continuing the giving, I can ask Steve Arn, who was treasurer, did we ever miss one payment to the bank of New Glarus? Never. As a small body of believers, but God faithfully through the group, through those people who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That is the church, the New Glarus Bible Church. We, you, I, until he comes, or we go from life unto life into the new heaven and new earth that'll be better than even what we see out here in the beautiful fall colors that are coming. Even though we love it, we love the creator more. And that has to continue. Thank you, sir. That was shorter than the minutes. I'll add an amen to that. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I'd like to introduce um, another deacon, Jim Jensen. He's right back there. Jim has had a long history with our fellowship as well. Top of my note says five minutes. <clears throat> I was sitting at home last night getting ready for bed and I'm going, oh yes, I'm supposed to say something. So I scribbled a few notes, and I mean scribbled, so I might have to be studying a little hard. Uh, but I love this church. Um, there was a time when I knew nothing about it. Uh, I graduated from Faith Baptist Bible College in 81. In 1982, I was a college graduate living at home not knowing where uh, what I was going to do next so doing what you do just finding jobs I was tending hogs at the hog farm uh, that I had at the time when I got a call from Brian Wingenroth saying would you be interested in uh, possibly teaching at our Christian school uh, I had a um, degree in Christian education and youth work and I thought hey something I was trained for maybe this might not be a bad idea but I came, uh, the Lord directed me to come here at the school uh, as a uh, young single man. Um, not knowing what all was involved, but uh, the school was here. I taught for two years at the school. It was an ACE school, so it was more like a school. I wasn't administrator, it was what they called supervisors at the time. I was here for two years. Uh, the second year is when I got married. Um, thank you, Liz, for filling in a lot of the things there, um, and it was a wonderful time. At the end of those two years, though, um, the school needed an administrator, and I was too young, too immature, I did not feel the Lord leading me to be an administrator of the school. I had to decline that position. They could not keep me on as a teacher and hire an administrator due to finances. Um, so there I was with uh, no job, pregnant wife, um, wondering what, to, what God would do next. And there's been many changes along the way. But the one thing that God did do was he did not direct me to go elsewhere. I did not feel the, his leading to go anywhere else. So there were more changes in my life. 
following years that came along, I had five different career changes um, as my uh, family grew until 17 years later, our school was without an administrator. Glenn Andes was being led back to the pastorate. I was on the church board and our church board was saying, we have no administrator, are we gonna have school next year or not? I said, well, I taught in the school, I'm familiar with it, I'll fill in uh, until you get somebody better. And so I filled in for the next 12 years. <laughs> it was a wonderful thing. Uh, but then God directed to close the school uh, after those 17 years. And it's interesting. People think, well, the ministry closed. It must have been a failure. No. Anytime there has been opportunities for people to hear of their need of salvation, every student had that understanding that they were sinners, that Christ died for them, and we can have salvation through faith in Christ. And they got an education. Did everybody turn out as good as Liz and Rand? Well, some even better. <laughs> but not all, not all. Uh, but like I said, they all had the opportunity to learn. They all were given the tools. And I have met many students over the years that look back at the years at school. Students don't like school, but they, they enjoyed their time here. Um, but then, after the school closed, I had three more career changes. But still, God did not lead elsewhere. God kept Joyce and I here to wherever we can, to do what we can. And so throughout the years that we have been here, there have been some changes in ministry. Um, working in the school, working in Awana, working with youth. Believe me, I really appreciate the McMillans and what they're doing with the youth. youth Joyce and I used to be the youth leaders. Um, we'd have them over to our house in the basement for youth night, um, having wonderful times, having interesting times, um, doing different things. We had all-nighter here at the church building. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Somebody else, you go, go for it. But those were, we had, we had the fun. Uh, ministry uh, changes, okay. Um, song leader, I did that for many years. I remember when Lynn came and started doing the song leading. I, you know, I had been doing this for, long, for many years, and I asked Bill, how long have I been doing this? And he said, long enough. <laughs> Appreciate that. I was administrator assistant for a while. Um, Joyce and I taught uh, Sunday school. We did junior church. Um, now I'm the uh, church technician. Uh, and uh, throughout all this, God just gives opportunities. And there have been many people that have served throughout the years, um, some for a long time, and some that have uh, been here for a short amount, served while they could, while, before God leads them other places. It's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to have these times of people serving. And the church has been here throughout all the different life changes. Um, you were here when I got married. I didn't get married here, but many people from the church drove all the way to Slater, Iowa for our wedding um, and then welcomed us with open arms. They were here for the birth of our two girls, through the loss of our parents, through the marriage of our two girls. And um, a little side note I have on here, there were many adopted moms when I came here that kind of took me under their wings. There were many adopted grandmothers for our girls. And Mavis, um, her and Catherine, you gotta watch those two. They went out looking for cute guys. <laughs> I know because Mavis told us all about it, so did Catherine. Uh, but <clears throat> th there was this, uh, this joy that we had in being part of the family. Uh, you were here, birth of our grandsons. Um, helping and celebrating with that through the loss of our daughter Rebecca of the support and love that came flowing from you guys was overwhelming and then through Joyce's accident where she was three months in the hospital and nursing home in recovery um, and now back home still recovering but doing so wonderful and you're so encouraging and helping along the way because we're family whether 
like I said, whether here for a short time, whether here for a long time, we're family because of that common faith in Christ um, and that desire to serve him. And as has been mentioned so many times, the desire to preach God's word. The future is still unknown, but God's faithfulness is always there in joy and in pain. And as the church is faithful to God, uh, we need to be faithful as well in upholding one another in the joy and the pain that life comes, not to help us feel better, but to be able to give God the glory and to God be the glory for what he has done for the 50 years in this building and for whatever the future may hold. Thank you, Jim. At this time, we have an opportunity. Um, another deacon, uh, David Way, I understand that he found out this morning he was going to be speaking. <laughs> so I, I heard that you told someone, no, 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 it's just listing the deacons. I'm not going to say anything. So I guess he's going to. Now, with this guy, he gets a little bit emotional. So we'll not have to, time. not this time. No. Okay. Not this Thank time. you, brother. Thanks. <laughs> I've been gone for about three weeks, uh, traveling around, doing some hunting, and uh, somebody mentioned my name was on the list. And so I asked Pastor, are we supposed to say something today? And he goes, oh yeah, don't worry about it. By the time you speak, they'll all be gone anyway. So, <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, yeah, my name is David Way. Um, my wife and I and family have been coming here about 17 years, and uh, that time has flown by. Um, I also, I think, have the moniker of being the youngest deacon, um, but I don't feel that way. Uh, this church has been fantastic for us, for our family. We were fairly young in our faith when we came here. Um, we actually moved here two years prior to that, but we're going to a church over in Mount Horeb uh, because they had a large Awana program, and um, we were invested into Awana uh, from our previous church. Um, then along the way we found uh, there was a wana here, so we started coming uh, to this church for a wana. Uh, but really, what what kept us was the message that we found, that we heard, um, the the love and affection that we found through the, the members of the church. Um, I absolutely love the the prayer time that we have. We pray for each other, um, and so what we found was was community. Um, and so that's what kept us here and has kept us here. Um, uh, pastor didn't tell me how much time I had, so maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> no, no, I'll be, I, I will be really brief. It's been a long day. What I recognized today is um, just not only the history, but the faithfulness. Uh, we have decades and decades of, of faithful stewards, faithful uh, followers of Christ, uh, faithful peop people teaching other people. Um, and so that's what strikes me about the, what I've heard today, what I've seen today. And um, I go back to that Awana and being faithful. And, and I remember uh, we had smaller Awana groups than we do now. And I asked my wife and, and I said, so how many, uh, how many do we have now? And she said, I think we have about 30 TNTers and about 28 Sparkies, and about 17 Cubbies, or as Pastor Tom says, Chubbies. Um, but that's huge, you know, and that's because of the faithfulness of the church, the, the church members, and the body, and the believers. And uh, I think a lot of those kids are going to grow up uh, to be the next Rand or the next Liz, and they're going to change the world. Um, I know our kids were significantly helped uh, to, to learn how to love Jesus through the Awana program. They all became believers through that and through our encouragement. Um, and I think it was mentioned earlier, uh, we've got three kids. Uh, our girls are following Christ, and, and Danny is uh, serving in camp ministry as a director over at Camp Beach Point for uh, Camp for Inner City Kids. And uh, youngest daughter is, is Katie. Her and her husband are doing international missions six months overseas, uh, traveling around the world, literally, uh, changing lives uh, to people indigenous and, and those that don't, haven't either heard the gospel or, or need to rehear it, but well, we always told the kids that they could change the world. They could do 
things that would change the world. And uh, earlier this year, uh, Katie and her husband Trent got to meet with the king of Benin uh, because they, he, was, he asked that organization to come up and change the country and help uh, spread Christianity. So my daughter's meeting with kings uh, to help spread the world word um, to, to really show who, who the king of kings is, really. And uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and you can pray for my son, Zach, who's not necessarily following the Lord, uh, but he knows the truth. And they all learn that, again, through Awana. And that's, uh, they, they would listen to us, but they also listen to other members of this church, uh, help them and help to teach uh, the lessons through Awana. Um, and so, again, faithfulness, um, it, it, today is not just a history lesson. I hope you don't just walk away and go, oh, that's kind of cool, history. But it is a history in the faithfulness of who this church body is, who the people are, who Christ uh, is in, in and through each one of those. And uh, I guess that's the challenge to us, right, to the younger uh, members here, that we pick up that mantle and we be faithful, that we are the uh, salt and the light out in the community. Uh, and don't be fearful um, because the Lord's on our side. So that's all I have. Thank you. So this is the scary part, point of the uh, opportunity we have where we open up the mic to anybody who would like to say something. That's scary, um, but it really would be a blessing. If anybody, if the Lord is speaking to you hard and you just want to share a testimonial of, of God's faithfulness, what you've seen him do through this body, we'd welcome you to come up and just share a couple of moments with us. And uh, we'd love that. I, somehow I knew Rand would be first. <laughs> welcome, brother. Welcome. I love you, Miss Janet. Uh, you know, it was great growing up here. And uh, I go to church at Oak Hill Christian Church in Janesville. And our church has gone up and down and up and down and up and down because we have core families that basically refuse to allow anyone else to be family. And we just went through it again, and now we have a new pastor, and he gets it. You don't have to go that way. You really can just embrace everybody, say, we are the family of Christ. Let's go. And just pick up the phone, say, I got a need. Do you know how to fill it? I was encouraged earlier, was Mr. Andy's talking about somebody knew how to cut wood, somebody knew how to put windows in, somebody knew how to hammer a nail. We all have something that we can do. Let's do it for each other and do it for Jesus because when you take care of strangers in your midst, they become family. Imagine that. Anyway, thank you, Liz. Great job. Um, I graduate a little earlier than Liz. Um, joined the service after a year of Bible college. God is faithful. 26 years in the Air Force. You know, the, the American Legion says I served in three wars. My ribbons, my ribbon rack says I served in three wars. The U.S. government says I served in three wars. But now that I work for the federal government as a civilian, I'd like to say I work, I've been in four wars. <laughs> and the war that I'm in now is a war that is anti-Christ. Prayer changes things. But not always the way you think. About four years ago, I had a little, my wife calls it a visit to the spa. Some of you remember that. When uh, after a, a really good afternoon, hanging out with my daughter and her friend, I thought I had, uh, you know, food poisoning or some kind of an asthma attack. And the next thing I knew, I did a spin move and I'm on the floor. And it's happened to be COVID Saturday. The day that COVID was like, everybody stay home, we're gonna die. There was nobody on the highway, according to my wife, because I was asleep. There was nobody on the highway when that ambulance went from Janesville, 
SSM emergency room all the way to Madison SSM hospital. Nobody, not one other vehicle on the highway. My boss, by Monday, he's 10 years younger than me. Some of you know what that means. <laughs> My boss was calling his dad who'd had a heart condition and had a single bypass. He called some friends of his that were in the cardiac wards. And his question was, should I start hiring now? <laughs> That's what the devil wants us to think too when somebody trips and falls. When somebody has a little stumble and a, a boo-boo on their knee or they have a spiritual struggle. Oh, we better look for the next best thing. That's not how God works. I woke up on Palm Sunday. I walked on Easter Sunday. I was home by my anniversary. And I told my boss at the first meeting, I came back for you. And you know what? He doesn't like that. <laughs> but neither does the devil. So let's continue to be faithful. I thank everybody who's done everything they could do to make sure that these youngins, Liz and I, could raise the next generation of youngins and our progeny could be our legacy. Thank you. Thanks, Rand. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share a word of encouragement? I see Marvin nudging Amy. <laughs> yes, Steve, okay. I will stand here next to Steve. <laughs> Just in case. So my wife Sandy and I have been coming here now for I think over two years. Thank you. <laughs> Three years. And um, it's been a blessing beyond our imagination. I, we didn't realize, I think, when we first showed up in the midst of, of COVID. We came down here into Greene County because we live in Dane County, and we couldn't, be, we couldn't be free during that time in Dane County. There were too many restrictions. So we would come down to Greene County where things were a little bit uh, more relaxed. And um, we... Um, I think I met uh, uh, Pastor Boomer on Facebook, um, yeah, and, uh, and said, I think, I think the time is, is now uh, that the, the Lord will soon be returning, and I can tell that because of what's going on around us. And so, so Sandy and I said, well, let's go there and listen to one of Pastor Boomer's sermons, and we'll make a decision based on that. So we came, heard a sermon, and we looked at each other and we said, this is it. And so we've been here ever since. And um, it's been fantastic, it really has. And I appreciate and love all of you, every one of you. And. Um, special anniversary time for the for the church and uh, special time for us because we feel so at home here and part of the family here and uh, I know that that will continue for as long as the Lord allows it uh, because um, he is coming soon and uh, the time is much closer now than it was and so as we as we look at the changing events in the world and as things might become difficult, um, we're gonna help each other through this uh, as family and uh, with the Lord's help. That's all I have. I'm surprised there's this many people still here. This is awesome. And we've heard some incredible testimonies. And uh, um, it was delightful to hear from the other um, pastors, uh, those who've been here in the past, and they all did a great job. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness once again. Thank you for the way you've worked through this ministry in the past, um, the way you've raised up um, 
new Christian leaders. They were children at one time, and now they're leaders. We thank you for that. Thank you for the way you're working in our midst even today. Uh, we pray for those, uh, the multitude of Awana uh, children that we have. Lord, we pray that you would be working in their lives. And Lord, that this would be the next generation that um, perhaps, if you tarry, um, could turn this nation around. Father, I thank you for each and every person that's a part of our church. I thank you for the leadership here. I thank you for the, the unity that we have. And we pray for many more good years. I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Now we have to turn this thing back into, uh, we have to clean up. <laughs>